to make sure that we fully understand how the pre-composed layers work together and inside of each other as well, we need to um, make some uh, edits quite deep down within our composition. And this will sort of reflect the um, instance of having a, a, your VFX art director coming along and saying, oh, can we go and have some lightning on your planet down there? You need to be able to know how to go into your pre-composed layers and execute that task. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and add some lightning to the dark side of the planet. Um, and so we need to find out what layer we need to be in. And it's the planet and moon layer. So we can see we've got the moon on its own here. We can turn it on and off. But we've got each individual layer of the planet here. So it's your pre-composed layer that has all of your clouds and city lights, all the separate layers. This is where we need to be. So we need to go and find our clouds and then go and duplicate those. Uh, and we need to sort of see the shape of these clouds in the shadows of the planet as we create the lightning. Um, and, and again, just like the city lights before, we can't see these clouds in the shadow. So we need to go into the effects drop down of the, of the new clouds layer, go into the CC sphere and change the uh, light and change it or drag the light height to the dark side of the planet. Basically just enough so that you can see the clouds on the dark side over there. Now what we need to do is add a mask. So we need to draw around some clouds that we would like to um, get um, lit up by lightning. Um, but the main problem is um, that when we create a mask directly onto a layer that has these crazy effects like this CCC sphere on it, it may crash your computer. So what we need to do is pre or just go completely wrong. So we need to pre-compose this clouds layer with a null object and then group them together and then mask that group, not the clouds layer directly. So I'm just going to, with a clouds layer selected, I'll go to layer, new, null object. Now I'll create a null object just above the layer that was selected. I need to select that null object and the clouds layer together and then go to layer, pre-compose and rename it to lightning. And now you can just turn those clouds on the dark side on and off. And of course we need to change the blending mode of this pre-composed layer to screen so that we can see through it once more. Um, and now we need to find out at what point in time we would like our lightning to appear. So if I just quickly go to the master shot, I don't want there to be lightning when the lens flares passing the camera. Um, it's going to be too much. But maybe we want to, the audience to be looking at something about halfway in between the position, sorry, halfway in between the start and when the lens flare enters the scene, just so the, we keep them entertained. So somewhere around um, just before three seconds, or two and a half seconds, will be good. So now I can go back to my planet and moon layer, and I know it's at three and a half seconds. And I should be able to use the pen tool. So the pen tool is just up here next to the ellipse tool we've been using. And this will work as a mask as well. You won't be able to see the effect it has until you finish drawing your dot to dot shape. So what I want to do is I can see there's like some kind of storm formation over here. I'm going to use the pen tool to go around it like this and join up those dots. And once you finish joining up those dots, it will only show you what's inside of them. And if you, if you deselect, it looks pretty crap because there's a solid edge on it. So we need to go to the lightning, masks, mask one, and increase the mask feather uh, slightly like this. And you can even decrease or increase the mask expansion to choose how much of an effect that lightning has on your uh, surrounding areas, but that's fine with me. So I'm going to go down to transform um, and go to opacity. And then at this point in time, at two and a half seconds, I want there to be 
I want to see the lightning. Lightning is obviously super fast, so I'm going to zoom in so I can sort of see individual frames when I drag my time slider and drag the opacity down to zero. Um, maybe the first flash of lightning actually I only want to be at 50%. Um, sometimes we see before the actual lightning bolt happens, maybe there's a, a faint thing that happens beforehand. So the first flash of lightning will be only at 50% and then it has to go back to zero again. The, 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 the exact frame afterwards and we go to the next frame along so it's, it is frame by frame animation it's quite painful but it's how it's done we're now going to drag the opacity to a hundred percent hit enter and then the next frame back to zero the next frame back to a hundred percent and then the next frame back to zero okay and then if you just go and play that real quick you should see there's a a brief flash and it happens so so quickly but it's with three flashes it's just enough to see and again when we see sort of sheet lightning often um, one bolt of lightning will cause a chain reaction and there may be a lightning happening somewhere else as well so what we can do is drag um, or drag this shape of this mask around now. So I'm just going to move this up so I can see a bit more. And if I go to mask path, mask path is this. It's the shape of the mask. It tells us where it is. So at this point in time, I want the mask path to be there because um, I like the fact that I can see this sort of hurricane shape when it's um, selected. And I'm going to click on a keyframe for mask path. And now I'm going to move that path around um, I'm actually going to increase my, the opacity. Maybe I'll leave it at zero there. So after that flash of lightning, there'll be a pause for a whole frame. And then the next frame after that, the opacity will be at 100%. And it's important that I can see the clouds lit during a bolt of lightning as I move my mask shape around. So you can move the edge points of your mask shape so perhaps this area over here, um, like that. Okay, and uh, so now the mask, if you just drag it along, you can see it actually moves like that. And so that by the time the next sheet of lightning happens, it's over there. I might actually want this to expand along. So I'm actually going to have that just down to there for now. And then what we can do, I'm actually going to copy and paste some of these keyframes here. Um, so I know it's a zero, it's a hundred percent here. I want it to go back to zero percent. So I'm just going to copy those keyframes because um, zero, hundred, zero, etc. So I'm just going to copy those guys, move my time slider one frame to the right, and hit Control V. And I've now pasted those keyframes of the lightning turning on and off afterwards. And so we should see some nice flashes. Um, for the second flash, I want to move my mask all the way up here. So the first flash is like that. The second flash is all the way up there. And maybe I just want one more flash. So I'll copy the, that keyframe of 100% and that keyframe of 1%. Do Control C. I move my time slider to the right like that and hit Control V. And I've got one more sort of movement um, or flash of lightning to play with. And now I'm actually going to move my key, sorry, these uh, little corner points off. So it looks like the lightning is traveling up this cloud like that. And so if you quickly play through this, there's a flash of lightning over there and it causes a chain reaction all the way up there like that. And so. If we zoom out and then deselect everything so I can't see my mask shapes and hit play, we can see what effect this has had. So again, it will, it will happen super fast, but it's just a nice touch. So maybe that last flash was a bit bright, so you can then go in and drag the opacity. If you hover over, it should say 100%. You can drag that down perhaps to 80% or something if you want. 
and uh, you've got that there. So let's uh, let's go back to our overall view now, and we can see our lightning happening like that. Um, and maybe we want to see that again. Maybe the director says, "No, I want to see more lightning just before the um, the vehicle enters the shot." Um, and so we can just do that really quickly by copying the existing frames that we have. Um, and so I'm actually just going to duplicate these frames here and the mask path like that. I'm just going to do Control C. What's that keyframe at? That should be at zero, yep. Yeah. And then I think we wanted it at about four seconds. We can do Control V and we have something similar like this. Okay, so now. If we go back to here, we should see that lightning animation duplicated. So <clears throat> the process of duplicating keyframes will save you a lot of time. <clears throat> and so now if we hit play, we can see that happening just like that. And so I, I, because I only copied half of the keyframes, the animation doesn't look exactly identical because we don't see the initial flashes of that storm, which is quite good. And so... Um, and then we could even copy and paste some of those to the very end if you wanted as well. But that is how you would do your lightning. And once you've got this done, the scene is pretty much finished. You can go ahead and add some sound effects if you wanted. So um, I've got like some Star Wars vehicle sound effects. I'm going to drag them into here. I'm going to make sure I can't see the video. Obviously, I just downloaded it from YouTube. I can expand out to audio waveform and then I'm just going to look for a good vehicle sound which I think is this guy here. Um, I'm going to find out where the lens flare enters the camera and move that sound to there so that when I can't see the lens flare I can't hear any sound. When I can see the lens flare the sounds quite loud and then it, as it gets further away I can make it quieter. So now we need to keyframe sound because I don't want to hear any of these um, at at walker footprint sounds over there. So I'm going to go and click on audio levels, stopwatch, and it puts a dot there. I can then drag a dot beforehand, a keyframe, sorry, and where it says decibels is currently at zero, which is default, I can drag this to minus 99 or whatever, and now. There will be absolute silence until here, where we can hear stuff. Um, and now I want it to get slightly quieter the further away it gets. Let's say I'm happy with the volume here. If I'm happy with the volume there, I'll put a keyframe there without changing anything. But by the time it gets over there or towards eight seconds, I want it to be pretty much uh, quiet again. So I can drag this down to um, just so the, the noise calms down a bit like that. Now, if you want to preview um, audio in After Effects, all you've got to do is click on this button over here called RAM Preview, and that will create a preview with audio as well. You'll have to wait for it to buffer in, and once it's buffered everything in, it will preview. Before hitting and then um, click on it again to stop previewing, and it will just sort of cycle through what it has rendered. What I would recommend doing before you get to that is just drag this bar here. This is the um, work area in terms of time. I'm going to drag that to eight seconds. So when we hit this button, it's now only going to render those eight seconds that we're interested in and not all the way to 15 seconds. Um, and that's also what we will render at the end as well. You can also drag in your thunder sound effects. Again, make sure you can't see it. Expand down, audio, waveform, and um, look for some claps of thunder that happen uh, when your lightning does as well. So I'm just going to move it to there. And again, if you hit the full stop button on your number pad, you can just preview audio on its own as well. So again, I'm going to get to audio levels and make sure it's absolute silence beforehand. Okay, and then it obviously quietens down afterwards as well. Okay, and then um, you can obviously 
duplicate that thunder layer for the second clap of thunder if you want or find something else um, but that will do for the sake of the tutorial and so if you want um, you can just do like I've done here and duplicate your thunder layer and move the keyframes around and you can find some other sort of thunder sounds if you want to use them and lay them on top of each other and you should have a video with these sounds and I know it's in space but again if you watch any sci-fi film you'll always somehow be able to hear the lightning from above orbit if you don't believe me watch Guardians of the Galaxy so if you, go, if you hit play we should have something like this okay, and again if you wanted to replace that lens flare with a, a Maya render of a vehicle then you could easily do that um, and later on we could come in and replace this moon with a broken moon after you do that tutorial in Photoshop.